Okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, hi, I am Martijn. Uh, I work for Elasticsearch, and I'm going to talk about the percolator. Um, so, in, in this talk, I'm going to give you an overview of what the percolator is, uh, where you, what, for what you can use it for, uh, uh, how, how it works, some uh, tips and tricks. Oh, yeah. What is happening? Okay. This is... I'm not sure why this is happening. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. <laughs> I am, hopefully. Usually when I'm, okay. Why is it, okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> this is a very bad start. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea why it was on that setting, so. <laughs> uh, so. I, uh, I will talk about the percolator, what it is, what you can do with it, its features, and how it works, and some tips, tips and tricks. So, before I talk about the percolator, let's talk about Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch, uh, we index data, we search, that's what we used to. Uh, this is an example where we used to index in documents. Uh, you see, we do a puts, uh, we index in the name, uh, index in the index called my index with, uh, with the type and mapping my type and ID. And the payload of that uh, call is the actual document with its fields and values. So, if you add a document, fine. Uh, you can define a query. Uh, you say, okay, I want to search in index my index. Uh, we use the search endpoints uh, and we define a query as the payload. Uh, in this case, we define a match query, um, which is, uh, it's, is the most, uh, most commonly used query in Elasticsearch, uh, used to match a document. And um, we define the field body with, uh, uh, the, with, with the value coffee, and you know, hopefully we get something back. And obviously we get something back. So we, we, uh, we uh, have indexed documents, do a search, and we get, we get back uh, hits, which are the documents we used to have indexed. But, now do it differently. Now let's let's percolate. So instead of uh, of of indexing a document, we're going to index a query. And if you comp uh, if you look at this this call, it looks similar to the to the index call. The only difference here is that we index into a, a dedicated type called dot percolator. And we uh, define the body of that of that uh, call, the, the payload, is the query and not the data itself, the document. Uh, here we, uh, we also define the, the query, uh, the match query, the similar query we, we saw in the search API. Um, when we have added a query, we can use the percolator, uh, percolate API in order to figure out if that query match with the documents we want to percolate, we want to verify. And this is a an, an, an different API than the search API, but it looks similar. Uh, I mean, the, the, the the URI is so we have the the index we want to uh, uh, we want to percolate the type and we use the percolate endpoints. But as the, the the payload of that of that call is not the query but the document, and if we run that we get back a match, and it's the query that matches with this document. So we do the reverse. So instead of of searching for data, we are looking for if our documents match with queries we have registered. Um, now, if you look at this response, we, it's, uh, it, it tells you how many, how many queries have matched, 
uh, how many uh, how many matches there are. So this is we only I only show the first match, but in but by default it just returns the ID of the query that it has matched, um, and it returns some some general header information how long it took and how many shards that the request went to, which I will talk about a bit later. Uh, but the essence is we 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 match queries. Um, so what we did is we did the opposite. We, 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 we reversed our flow, effectively, of finding stuff. And the reason why it works is that both data documents and queries uh, are defined as JSON. Um, so for Elasticsearch, that query might as well have been the, be a document, but it just follows the structure of, 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 of the query DSL uh, Elasticsearch has. Um, and that's why it happens to use to, to store it. And because we put it in this special uh, percolated type, it gets treated uh, uh, in special ways in that, uh, so that, that the query uh, effectively gets loaded. And when you percolate, that query gets checked with the document you want to percolate. So that's, in the essence, what the percolator is. Uh, but the question is, why would you want to do this? What, why, what is it useful for? Um, so let's look at, at uh, some uh, use cases. Um, the most obvious use case for the percolator is uh, monitoring or alerting. Um, um, you, you store queries you want to view, uh, you want to be alerted, alerted of, and once data gets indexed, you want to be notified by that. That's the most obvious use case. And you know, there can be a lot of concrete examples for it, price monitoring, news monitoring, weather monitoring, stock alerts, alert me when this particular stock is below or above a certain value. Um, that's, that's the use case. Um, OK. It's a big query. Uh, I mean, relatively big. Um, so here, what we did here, we, uh, I'm going to register a, a certain alert, something I want to be notified of. And I'm interested in certain uh, TVs. I, I have my eye on a special LED TV that I want to buy, but I don't want to pay the, you know, uh, six or seven euros, I want to pay up to it for uh, up to 500 euros. Um, so we, 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 in this case, we have an alerts index where we store the percolator queries in. Uh, it can be any index, you don't, are not, uh, any index can, can contain the percolator type. Um, uh, and we define the, uh, in this case, a Boolean query. And um, we should be notified if the price is uh, uh, lower than or equal to than 500. And the product name um, um, is Smile TV or something else. I don't want to put in any brands here. I try to stay uh, I don't have to bias myself. Um, so um, you see we have a range query and a match query. And if you're not familiar with like Elasticsearch, the, the match query just matches on specific terms, and the range query just between a certain range it, it will it will uh, you know match a document. In this case, they both need to match because we uh, uh, combine them in a boolean. Uh, a query with must classes. OK, we have this query registered. And now the uh, document gets indexed that happens to have this letter fee below the specific price. So it's, it's uh, a product with a name and price. And um, yeah, what now? It's, it's indexed, but uh, you know, you're not notified by it. Uh, so you need, to use the, uh, uh, you need to use the percolate API in order to get notified by it. So uh, we, in this, this, this case, we've indexed the documents, and now I'm actually sending the data twice, but now to the percolator API in order to get notified. Um, when this call returns, it will, it will obviously match with a query, so I can have, have logic in my application that I then notify the specific user, send an email, or uh, send a private message in my application, so that he is notified by the fact that there, are, uh, that there is something that he is interested in. Um, but we are, you know, it's we are sending it twice. So maybe there, I mean, there's a better way to do this. Um, whenever you index something into Elasticsearch, it returns response. Uh, so we have indexed the, the fact that you know we uh, we updated the document, we indexed it again, and the price is now 499. Um, in this case, it will return, and what in the index response it contains the ID of the document, uh, and that can be used by the uh, by invariant of the percolate API, it's called the percolate existing document API. Apparently, it's not you know, it's not a very creative name, but 
Um, in this case, I effectively say, uh, use this document that's in this specific index and use that to, uh, to percolate. Um, and in this, case, in this case, effectively what happens is that the get API and the percolate API are merged. The get API in Elasticsearch is an API that, tells you that, that allows you to retrieve a document by ID. And the, you know, this is just got embedded with this API. Um, so in these cases, we, uh, we index into to the prices index, so uh, with, uh, uh, and with the type price and ID uh, one. So that's the, 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 the first index we define. And then as percolate index, we define uh, the alerts index, which is where the query is stored. Uh, and uh, when, we're in, when we run that, it will obviously also uh, be uh, return a positive, so it will, it will tell that it match. Um, but the, the key is here that you don't need to specify it twice. So the idea is that whenever you index your application, index data into Elasticsearch, uh, you get back the response and invoke one post post call effectively to figure out if any of uh, of the saved searches or uh, user saved uh, uh, queries do match, without have to sending it twice. And that is effectively how in Elasticsearch you can implement uh, the, the the monitoring or the alerting use case with the percolator. Um, there's also another, another use case where you can use the elastic, uh, where you can use the percolator for, uh, and I like to refer to it as the query feedback use case. It's a bit cryptic, but the idea is that you are going to, uh, uh, you know, you kind of you are storing the queries that users are executing on your system. You store them in Elasticsearch uh, with some pre-processing, I, I presume, and um, uh, by storing those queries you effectively are capturing valuable information. You're capturing how uh, users are searching in your site, uh, uh, what they're interested in. That is very important information, not for you, but also for users that are using your system. And in, the use case of, in this use case, we're talking about uh, uh, like a marketplace uh, 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 or an, an kind of e-commerce site where, where uh, consumers can sell products. But obviously, when, you f when a con consumer is going to sell products, it's going to fill in some properties about it and the price uh, uh, of how much it costs. But it, you know, it, it, it can submit this advertisement and hoping that someone will find it. But, but if you are storing your user's, user's queries, you can effectively tell the user before, you know, before actually saving the advertisement, is this going to match with something? So, um, by effectively, in, in the edit form, by if someone changes the property or an attribute, you, you run the percolate API. That whole edit form, form is then turned into a document. You percolate against the user's queries, and it will tell how many queries have matched. And that's valuable information. So you can, for example, pick a price range where you know at least people are looking at your product, looking at, you know, at the car you're selling, at, uh, at, at, the, at the real estate object you're selling, something like that. So that's a really practical use case of where you can use the percolator. Um, <coughs> um, and another use case of, of, I don't have examples of the previous one, but of how to use it, but it's similar how you just use the percolator, but you just have to store the queries. Another use case is a classification use case, where uh, you like to uh, automatically categorize, tag documents that are going into Elasticsearch, um, um, effectively, what the, what the workflow is, is that before you index it, you, re, you percolate the document and then return the IDs of queries that match. You use those IDs to categorize a document. For example, you can have uh, a, uh, a percolated query that you stored that is a, a geoshape uh, filter. Uh, and that allows to do, to do some geotagging that is custom to your, uh, to your, to your application. Um, um, and automatically, you know, categorize and tagging uh, documents. For example, if you store percolated queries that have certain uh, terms that are unique to a specific category, you just have to run that document in the percolated API, and you will know, uh, you, you can tell what, what tags that document need, need to have. This is a pre-processing step. You will obviously need to implement your application. Um, but you can use the Percolate API in order to enrich your document before, uh, before saving it into Elasticsearch. 
Um, obviously, how to identify patterns, that is something that the Perkele doesn't do. You need to store queries that identify patterns. And you, know, you, you may need, uh, need to you know, uh, do, some, do some research. What are the appropriate terms or words that uh, encapsulate certain, uh, certain uh, categories of text? Um, you, you can, I mean, what I've seen is that you, you, can, you can use uh, aggregations in order to find out for a specific keywords or categories what are uh, important values, important terms, and, and, and uh, put that, well, uh, save that as a percolator query. Um, so that's an, another use case when you could use the, uh, the percolator for. Okay, so we find out what, for what, what the percolator is, what, for what it's useful for. Um, now let's, in, let's dive into the percolator, let's dive into how, how it actually works. So the, the percolator, um, when you index a query, um, what it does, it, it's, it stores that, which effectively document, it stores a document on disk, it's there. Uh, but it takes the whole, the, the query you've defined in a document, parses it, and, and saves the, well, stores the parsed version of it in memory. And, um, and that happens in real time. So whenever you're, you're, you're adding queries, you change the queries, that happens in real time. There's like a collection of, of, que of queries that, that, that's, that's, that's around there. When you then execute the Percolate API, a single the, that single document you've defined in the Percolate API gets indexed into a special in-memory inverted index. Once that's have happened, all the queries that are stored are you are used linear well in 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 serial are executed on this uh, in memory index, and it will just save whether it matches or didn't matches. That is in in you know what what it does. Um, um, after you've executed the percolate API, this in memory index gets cleared up, and you can do the, f the next uh, execution. Um, but the, the important thing is that uh, you know. On, on the short level, the execution is, is uh, li linear because it evaluates uh, each query one by one. There's not no, no special data structure that somehow can decide if it matches with this query, then I don't need to execute these queries or something like that. That's, that's not the case. Um, um, but the Procolator is a distributed uh, uh, feature, API. Um, when you store queries in the index, they get, they get effectively physically stored in, in shards. Um, each index in Elasticsearch has, has a number of shards, uh, partitions, where the data gets divided between. And the Percolate API executes in parallel across those shards. Um, and that's obviously very useful and, will can, and, and does speed up uh, the time it takes to percolate the documents, um, especially when you have a lot of queries. Um, also, uh, any index can have a percolator index. It's not something something special. Um, so you can, if, if your if your queries are divided between multiple indexes, um, you you can use you can use percolator across multiple indexes. Um, um, and in Elasticsearch, there's a, there's a, there's a feature uh, or like a, a distributed feature called routing, which allows you to control, uh, you know. What partition? Like it's not really what partition, but what part of the of, this, of the data set is being executed. Routing is something you you use all the way uh, from indexing to searching or or percolating, um, um, and that, that that can can reduce the execution. So here, a uh, small ID. Um, you know, this is let's say with three nodes, uh, with three. Uh, Three shards, and each each shard has a, has a replica. Um, in this case, uh, green is, is is a is a primary uh, shard, and 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 a white squ small square is a, is a replica shard. The Percolate API, the small client um, client square, or uh, is is the client executing the Percolate request, and that that Percolate request gets divided across all your all your nodes in a in a cluster that ha that you know your Percolate request was uh, targeted for. Um, um, so the, this is I mean, how, how, you, how you can scale out with the, with, with the percolator. Um, this is 
um, again, examples of the multi-tenancy of, of the Percolate API. You're going to find multiple indexes. Uh, you can define aliases uh, and, and, and percolate your, uh, uh, your document against, against your uh, registered queries. Um, you can define routing on top. That's what I talked about, routing. Um, obviously, you need to use it in index time as well, because you need to route your queries with the same values you would route uh, the percolate request for, or if you're searching, your search request. Um, um, and then if, if, you, if you do routing, then effectively, uh, the percolate by just needs to go to one shard and execute there. Uh, it doesn't need to, to look at all the queries. And this is how you can reduce the amount of queries uh, being executed uh, during percolation time. Um, and you know this the, because it's a linear execution. The, if you if you be smart with how you how you route, uh, uh, what indexes you you send a percolate request to, you can it can be really uh, fast uh, you know fast operation. Um, not to say that you know if you have 20 queries, you don't need to. I mean, then this is you know doesn't matter. But let's say you have five million queries, something in in that in those, those in those numbers. Um, that's something that you should take into account because. Um, if executing one, um, yes, you're saying some members, one uh, executing one query on on the on the in-memory index takes one milliseconds. If you have 50 million, million queries, it takes 50 million more uh, more time than that. Um, so that's the distributed aspect pact about it. That's that you know how you how you can scale scale out with it. Um, the percolate, um, yes. So another aspect I talked about is that percolated queries are stored in a special type, a percolator type. It's, it's prefixed with dot percolator, and that uh, emphasizes the fact that it's a hidden type. Um, uh, and a hit, in, 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 in hidden type means that if you, by default, search, because any index can, can contain percolated queries, but can also contain normal data, your documents. And normally, in, if you use the percolator, <coughs> Then uh, those percolator documents, oh, <coughs> sorry, that oh. I'm quickly dehydrating here. So <laughs> uh, those 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 percolator documents with our queries in memory eventually are not being being taken into account into account in normal search operations because you usually don't care about that. Right? You care about your documents when you search. When percolating, you only care about the percolator queries that are stored in the index. Um, so they're not uh, returned. So it can be surprising that, oh, I've indexed a lot of uh, documents with I percolator, but I'm not seeing them because they are hidden away by default. If you want to see them, you need to be, sp need to be specific about that and include it in the type when you search uh, in a search, search request. Um, you know, if you want everything, also the hidden types, you can just say as type underscore all comma dot percolator and you get all the results back. Uh, but that's just this that that that's just the current case. That's because queries and data can coexist in the same index if if one if 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 that's chosen. Um, a percolator also has a, a, a specific mapping that prevents the query from being indexed into the inverted index. It is Available in the in the in the document in the, the JSON you sent to Elasticsearch, it remains in the JSON when you get it back, but on the query and all its subfields you cannot you you you, you cannot search because that doesn't make sense to build inverted indices on top of this. Um, um, obviously, you care about it. You just change the mapping and you know up to you. But by default, we don't do this because we, that's not it's not needed. They they are they are queries. They are not documents. So that's why we disable that by default. Um, something else. When you said uh, a percolated query, like I said, is just a document, and the query field and all its subfields in it just get treated differently. But you're free to associate any other field with it, and those fields do get indexed. Um, so in this case, I add a field organization ID to it to a to my percolated query. Those fields are, like I said, do get indexed. And there are certain features on top of the Percolate API that can interact with those metadata fields. Uh, in this case, I tell the percolator to percolate a particular document, but only uh, percolate queries that have the field organization ID with this XYZ value. 
Also, this can reduce the amount of queries being evaluated, because in the end, it's a linear process, it's very uh, nice. Also, if you don't care about other queries being evaluated, just because you don't want, I don't know, uh, organization ABC to, uh, all those queries should not run on this particular document, you can use filtering for that. Um, percolating is a um, CPU intensive process. Um, can take a lot of CPU. I mean, in my experience, this, this, this MacBook Air goes on fire when, when I ex evaluate uh, millions of queries on a particular document. There's no way of stopping them, this, uh, this beast then. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the important thing to remember. So there are specific storing strategies you should keep in mind when, when using a percolator. Like I said, data and documents can, can coexist in the same index. If the number of queries are small, that's the way to go. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's fast. Um, but I've, in, my, in my experience, when you know, have growing over 100,000, 200,000, depending a bit on your hardware, of course, uh, queries, then it will it start to take significant resources of, of the nodes you're running with. Um, so then it's time to think about a dedicated percolator index where only the queries are in. Uh, the, 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 the upside of it, it, you can have dedicated sharding configurations for it. You can even allocate specific nodes and make sure that those percolator indexes are only allocated on those nodes. So to separate the, the resource which is being used between your normal search and your percolating. And obviously you can just start up a second cluster. I mean, that's also possible. Um, when you go with a dedicated percolator index, I haven't written it down here, but it's important that the mapping that is in the regular index is also in the, in the dedicated percolator index. Because when those queries, when you register a percolator query, a lot of queries rely on settings in the mappings. And if those mappings are not there, it will, it will assume a lot of defaults, and your queries are not parsed as you expect them to be parsed. So that's something to keep in mind when going with a dedicated percolator index. Okay, let's talk about the percolator features. Um, on top of the, uh, you know, the percolator API, there's also a, a specific, a, uh, specific uh, API used for counting. It's called the, the percolator count API. Uh, and the difference is that instead of underscore percolator, you do percolate, underscore percolator slash count. And it will just tell you how many percolator queries have matched. In the case you only care about that, obviously use this API. It will, you know, obviously do things that you that you that you don't need. To, I mean, it will prevent doing things you don't need to in the end. Um, um, I just showed that you can filter by a filter, but you can also filter by a query. Again, on the metadata of the of the of the of the percolator query, and um, yeah, the the only. Add a thing on top of on top of this uh, instead of using a filter is that queries they they can be scored if you, if you want to so that allows me that that is, uh, allows me to go to the next slide because there is some sorting scoring me uh, a mechanism in the percolator uh, API it's limited though but it's there and um, it allows you to score the queries based on its method. You define a query, in this case, click ID, maybe not, it's like a filter, but let's say you, you, um, do, you do another query, which I'm going to show you here. Let's, let's do something funky. Let's use the functions, uh, function score query, which is really, really cool. And in this case, uh, what this functions query, query does is uh, giving relevance on, uh, on the on the on the curate date of a of a uh, querying being registered, um, and in this case we have in this this case we ha we have metadata in this in the query called uh, curate date, and we want recent queries to be shown before the the uh, less re recent queries, and we do this in an exponential scale, and that starts from today and three years ago, which is roughly 1,000 days. And of course, the, the, queries of, I mean, the queries of last month will end up on the top. And that's nice when, when I mean, 
because the percolator API can scale, um, it doesn't, it's, uh, I mean, you, you, there's no time to evaluate all those queries. I mean, if you are going to show something, if there's not a machine consuming all the matching queries, but a human looking at it, it might be useful to have some, some kind of ordering, sorting on it. And you can uh, uh, do it via, via the function score query. Uh, and yeah, and that's, that's why, why uh, it's, that's useful. A, a normal query wouldn't match, uh, wouldn't match well because in, in, in a security in a scene, there's TF-IDF for when you have queries and documents, it's fine. But in the percolator case, we, uh, what, this one document sits in this in-memory index. Obviously, the, 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 the text properties, TF-IDF, they, they don't make sense there that much. Uh, TF may, may make sense, but the IDF doesn't, uh, definitely doesn't make sense. <clears throat> when you execute this, the, the matches also include the score. So you, that that's, yeah, makes sense. Um, you can even do aggregations on top of the metadata of, uh, of the queries. Um, in this case, well, what happens here, we create uh, a terms aggregation. Um, um, on the click ID, so it will show the top, the top click IDs of all the queries that have matched. Um, that's what the terms aggregation does, showing top terms uh, based on, on documents that match. In this case, documents are queries. There's also highlighting support. Um, in this case, we are, we're registering two queries, um, and I made a mistake here. Um, it should be dot percolator instead of underscore percolator. Um, um, silly mistake. And in this case, we, uh, we have brown fox and lazy dog uh, as two percolator queries. Um, when we percolate the document which has uh, a body field called the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and we tell the percolator to highlight on a body field, it will highlight uh, each match uh, it will highlight each, each match, so it will tell you how the document, or actually, how, how, the, how the query will highlight the document. And in the first case, it's, uh, it will highlight brown fox. In the second case, it will highlight the lazy dog. And finally, there's also an uh, API called the multi-percolate API, which allows you to combine multiple uh, percolate requests into a single API call. And that will reduce the network overhead you have to a cluster. So instead of inv invoking hundreds of requests, you can in invoke one request with one big body, effectively. And uh, um, um, the way you send a request to uh, the, the multi-percolate uh, endpoint is in an uh, 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 in, a, in such a way that each e each line uh, each line in the in the request body tells uh, effectively instruction. In this case, percolate, and in the next line contains uh, the document you want to percolate. Um, the second, uh, the third line tells to percolate an existing document, so that you don't need to specify the body again in the next line. It's just an empty bracket, uh, but it should be line separated all the commands, um, and it's just one one call to Elasticsearch. And uh, this is it. This is what I have to tell about the percolator um, and its features. And there is time for questions. Thank you, Martin, for your talk. If you have any questions, please wait for the microphone. Raise your hand. Hi, thank you. How does replication of the percolate queries work? Does it follow the indexes themselves, or? How does replication work with? So if one, if one node fails, for instance, it's not, those, the percolate queries are held on another node? Yes. In a replica, right? Yeah, on the replica node, yes. So w w at the moment, an, 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 an index request, and that replies not just for percolator, but using index request is uh, uh, returns, um, it's indexed on both copies, so so then a node can safely go down, and you know your your percolator query is still on the other on the other node available on that chart. And it, uh, yeah, so that's if that does it answer your question. Question? 
Okay. Okay. I don't see anything on the lights. Uh, yeah. So oh, over here. Uh, uh, can you use a query to do a multi-percolate? So query for documents and do percolate on those documents. Uh, yes, yeah. It's it's just a document, right? And you 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 can use query for it as well, yeah, in the search API. Okay, so using a query to produce a list of documents and percolate those. I mean, uh, I didn't fill in the last part. So so basically, if I do a query for say uh, every document indexed in the last five minutes, and I want to percolate those, would that work? Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the, the query part or, or the filter part, you can make sure that you only evaluate those documents in that time frame. Or only, you're only, the, the queries, uh, only the queries are being evaluated yeah. in the time frame. You have to get the results of the search and feed it into multi-percolate. You can't do a multi-percolate. It's not like delete by query. Oh, no, 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 okay. Then I misunderstood the question, sorry. Yeah, so the reason I asked was because you can uh, percolate on a document ID. So I was like, okay, what if I use the query to produce multiple document IDs? Uh, no, that's... Uh, that's not the no. implement, okay. No, not in a single API call. Right. Thank you. Yeah. We are an advertisement company and we have lots of keywords. We have to match you know, brands against those keywords. Is there a way, like as data is indexed, and if we percolate that against a brand like Adidas or Nike, to somehow uh, get the results streamed? Like, you know, um, so you percolate against a, a query, like you know, all the keywords which have brand Adidas. But as indexing happens, is there a way to actually get that by push, or you have to do always pulling? Uh, you have all. You have to check it. It's not. It's not push. No, no. So yes. if you want to know if something matches, you need exactly. to. You need to invoke an API call. So I, then I have to do like a, a percolate call, and then again for each of my queries, again a, a, a query. Yeah. If you want to do it after each uh, index call, mm -hmm. you should invoke the the, the percolate API. Okay. So and in, in, you know you can use the index response in order to to basically construct the percolate next percolate API call. Yep. It should be cheap because you only have to find the the, the ID. Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. So just a little follow-up on that question. Is there a reason why you can't just set a flag to say, I want to index this, but in the response, I'd also like the, the percolate? I'd like you to percolate it? Well, why do I need to make the second call? Uh, you mean, as, as, uh, are you talking about part of the, yeah, I mean, you mean as part of the index request? Is it, is it a conscious design decision that that? It, it, that that's design? a conscious design decision, yes. Um, so, because the, the, the percolate by itself is a distributed operation, I mean, it, it feels wrong to forcefully bind those two. So that's why the post call. I mean, um, yeah. So, I mean, but it, it, it's, it's as, you know, the pain is as, as, as little as possible. I mean, yeah. Time is up. So thank you very much for your talk, Martin. I, and one, one question. Who, who of you guys are using percolator? Um, how many hands? Two, three. Not so many, okay, okay. I should have asked it in the beginning, but I wanted to know stuff. So. <laughs>